All right, you guys, here's a quick game from the Freddy Krueger repertoire. And this one's in response to the bishop's opening. Um, it doesn't go on for long. This is less than 10 moves, okay? So the bishop's opening, e4, e5, and then white throws out the bishop. Now, this is quite an aggressive and trappy line. And so the response that I've found to it is that there, there is an f5 response as black. And this is very likely to throw off a lot of white players because it's not very common. So you can play f5 now, and this is known as the Calabresi counter gambit. Um, and what we are doing here is obviously, you know, it's, it's kind of risky because you've immediately opened up this diagonal towards the king. Um, now that's not playable right now because you've got g6, okay, and everything's kind of covered. Right, but um, the idea is we want to throw off our, um, we will throw white off his off his game straight away. Now, I'll show you how this game went. Now, in this one, we have the unusual line d4, and uh, I hadn't prepared this one. And when I actually went back to look into my um, my study, my Leicher study, I don't think I had a line for this one, so, but I have one now. Okay, so in the game. Now, in a couple of these, because um, we've got uh, we've got versions of this with the um, when you've got the knights out, okay, and white plays this. It's from the Italian, and then we get the Russo gambit. Uh, if white puts the bishop there, it's the whatever variation. Can't even remember what it's called. It used to be called the Janish. Um, but I know that in one of these situations, I remember that e takes d4 is the best move, even though this pawn is protected by the queen, rather than f takes e4, which is, of course, not protected by a king. So in the game, I played this move. And white recaptures by capturing on f5. And now, the thing that you have to think about, this is like playing the Vienna Gambit in reverse, is what happens if the queen comes out, okay? So now I played knight f6, which is a useful prophylactic move. It prevents the advance of this pawn, and it covers this square from the queen, right? So white now plays bishop out to g5, pinning the, the knight against my queen. And here, uh, I have a think for 38 seconds. It's a 10 minute game. Um, and the move that I come up with is bishop e7, to break the pin on my queen. Now, so obviously white now can't play the queen straight out because I can capture the queen for free and I'm only offering a bishop trade rather than a bishop for a queen. So, but I, I did figure this out and I figured out that um, if white took and I recaptured, then I could probably handle the queen coming out. And here's why. And this is something that if you adopt the Freddy Krueger repertoire, that you need to have this idea very much in mind, which is if you have a bishop or a queen here, you have a resource. Okay, so <clears throat> the game ends with me playing g6, right? And white goes, ha ha, you fool, takes, takes, and the rook hangs, takes, takes, Queen takes rook, bishop takes, queen resigns, right? And you, you have to know this. And there are other lines where sometimes your queen can end up here. You can get the same thing in a few different lines in the Vienna Gambit as well, if your queen ends up on c6. Um, and their queen comes out with check to here against your king, which is obviously, you know, on the opposite colored square and everything. But you, you do have this idea sometimes where pawn takes, and then if they capture your rook, it can be the end of a game very quickly because your rook is actually defended once that pawn takes. Anyway, um, but I thought I'd show you that. So, however, I did not play accurately in that game. And let me show you why. So, I've got the, this is the Calabresi counter gambit study on Lee Chess. I'll put the link into the description. Um, but you can just search for, uh, so what am I, just Ben Hunt on, on, on Lee Chess. Um, all my studies are public anyway. Okay, so this is how the game went. So in fact, quickly, let's just review chapter one. So chapter one, um, so from this position, okay, so this is the Calabresi counter gambit. 
And from this position, we can see e takes f5 is the number one, right? By far the most common things is, is accepted line with pawn takes. Then you've got d3, which is kind of conservative. Then you've got knight c3. Then you've got bishop takes g8. Then you've got queen h5 check immediately. Knight f3 and d4 is right down here with what? 3.5% of the time. So one in, about one in 30 games, you're going to see d4. It looks more natural than that. But with d4, white actually wins 55% of the time. Okay, So I didn't have a line for that. So I've created a, a chapter for d4. Because why not? Right, it's free. It's lead chess. And um, here's d4. And it places white at plus 1.2. So it's actually a very reasonable thing. In fact, according to the fish god... D4 is the second best move for white, only slightly behind D3. So D3 is best, but according to the engine, D4 is second best, but people don't seem to play it very often. So we have D4. And now E takes D4, correct, right? So I just kind of played that on instinct because I just basically kind of remembered it, right? E takes D4, and now the best move is actually according to the, the fish, is knight h3, which no one's going to play. No one's no one in the real world is going to play that, right? By far, well, e takes d5 and queen takes d4. So e takes f5. Queen takes d4 are the two most common moves. Here we had e takes d5, which the engine now slightly prefers black, right? Because you play knight f6, and that's what I played in the game. Right, um, that's the best according to the engine as well. Obviously, defending that, and now what White should play is knight e2 according to the machine. Right, bishop g5 is also playable. That's equal. So that's what we got in the in the actual game, isn't it? Now, what I played was this. Okay, and the reason that I go over these with you is a because it's good for you, but b because I'm reinforcing my own. Learning, right? So to go over it again. Now, the better move, according to the engine, significantly better. So, hang on. I, so I played, um, I played bishop e7. That's not even in the list. But B, bishop e7 here has been played, is the third most common move, been played 22 times, and white wins 73% of them. Interesting, right? I'm not going to go down that line. I don't really want to add it to my, in fact, Let's do it. Let's do it. Bishop e7, and then what happens? Takes. Yeah. Bishop takes. Yeah. Queen h5 check. Then if g6, f takes. Queen e7. What? What? Queen e7 check. Oh. Right. So if black plays queen h7 check. Okay, interesting. But that, that obviously is not what happened in the game. But I'm going to delete that, that line. right? So what happened in the game was I, I played this, but the better move here is the immediate d5. right? You need to play d5, and this is one of the very, very common moves when this bishop's out here. You want to push d5, occupy the center. So now we're controlling da 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 like this. Right? The bishop is then going to have to move with tempo. So the most common move here is that they take, and you take back with the queen, thereby defending this pawn here on d4. And you've got to fancy black here, right? And basically what it's saying is that unless white now plays the critical move, which is insane looking, right, then it's just winning for black. Right? So white has to play the absolutely crazy ape bonkers bishop takes d5. What? This is bizarre, right? And I'm, I'm going to put this only move, only move, and it looks utterly ridiculous. Right? But so bishop takes d5 has been played f uh, more than half the time. Okay, um, but black still wins 50% against 39% for white. This is crazy. 
So if they don't play bishop takes d5, let's say you get bishop b5, oh, it's saying now queen e2 check. Queen e2, and that's a blunder, isn't it? Yeah, that's a blunder. So queen e2, blunder, let's mark it as a blunder. Okay, why is it a blunder? Because we just sidestep. Then bishop takes d5, and black is losing. This is insane, guys, but look, any of us can do this. This is so cool. Oh, oh, I see it. Okay, saying so bishop b4 check, right? And then whatever happens, you've got knight d2, you've got c3, you've got knight c3, but what you're going to fall into is rook to e8. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. So knight d2 is the best move here. And we're going to get rook e8, and, and black's just winning, right? Black is black is winning. Okay, so let's just go back, right? If not, queen e2. So after this, so bishop takes d5 is just so irrational, right? So what else could they do? If not, bishop takes d5, queen e2 check, bishop b5 check, okay? And that again, from slightly better for black, also a blunder. Wow, this is crazy. C6, obvious C6. Again, the bishop's under fire. Right, this pawn hangs. We could develop our other bishop. We could castle. We have all the central control with pawns. Right, let's say, but yeah, bishop e2, they're saying. And then we play bishop b4 check again. Wow. Wow. And again, which it's simply black is black is winning, right? Let's go back. Let's have another look. Okay, I'm um, going to force a variation on that one because this is just weird, right? With this one, unintuitive, -in but the only non-losing move for white. Wow. Okay, but if they don't do that again, what else are they going to do? Bishop takes d5 has been played. And I've got it set now. Bishop d3, bishop d3, also a blunder. Holy cow! Um, and we play here, bishop c5. Um, the only move played by black so far has been knight c6, but bishop c5 again, simply winning, right? And black is winning. So this is this is crazy. Okay, so if if we get this line. Um, that's weird. So, all right. So, if they take, then we have to play knight there. All right. Then bishop g5. Um, but queen d4 is actually slightly more common. So, let's have a look at queen takes there. Um, it has black ever so slightly better already. And what do we do? d5. The fairly natural looking d5 is good. Knight c6 is good. Let's put in d5. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, I can't force a variation on that one. I can force variation there. There we go. Okay, so bishop g5 there, that's that's one option. This is the, I'm going to promote this one actually. So you can promote and then force variation to rearrange your, your lines. Okay, so this is, because this is the slightly more common move from here. Okay, we do, we play d5, yeah. We are equal at this point in time, but in reality, in practice, black wins 55% of the time from here. All right, so I, I'm not going to study it anymore from that point because um, that's I, you know, I don't go super, super deep into, into my games until I actually find that line in real life. But fascinating stuff. So, what do you need to remember? If you are a, a Kruger player, right, we play the Calabrese Counter Gambit. And this line just don't work. Just don't work for white. You, you play the slightly less natural looking e takes d4. And then pretty, well, pretty much whichever way it goes, it's going to be very difficult for white. So fascinating stuff. Anyway, so thought I'd share. Thanks for watching. See you soon.